Hey, what is going on guys? Max Settings here and welcome back to another review. In today's review, we are going to be starting off here on my actual desk and shifting back over to the review table for the more basic overview of these units. Uh, but today we are going to be reviewing two amplifiers, which are the IFI Pro ICANN and Pro IESL. Now both these units were loaned to me by IFI in exchange for an honest review. I am not influenced to say anything about them, just to give my honest opinion of both units, just a little disclaimer as always. Uh, but anyway, the one thing we'll get out of the way is these are very expensive amplifiers. The Pro ICANN here is $1,800 and the Pro IESL here is $1,500, so quite a pretty penny for these units. But today we are just going to do a little operation uh, of the amps here, and then we'll do the overview of them on the review table, because it's a little easier to pick them up and move them on the review table when they're not plugged in and functioning. So starting things off with the Pro ICANN here, this thing is a fully balanced headphone amplifier with a lot of features. And the Pro ISL here is a converter box that converts the specialized HDMI uh, into a voltage for electrostatics, as well as it can also do that with a speaker amp input or a four pin XLR input. And it also can convert that to a four pin XLR output for normal headphones. So the, the Pro I can here, uh, I just want to show you how long it takes to, to turn on. This is easier to do here. So below it we have the, the THX AAA 789, which everybody loves. And we're going to do a little race to see which one turns on first. All right, three, two, one. All right, THX is on. And the IFI is green in the little IFI logo that's up here in the corner. And there we go. The, the ICANN has just turned on. And now we have a functioning amplifier. So the other thing with this amplifier is it, it is a solid state amplifier as well as a hybrid amplifier, hybrid tube, and a full tube amplifier. And you can change that with a switch here that we'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, but this is how long it would take to turn on the tubes if you wanted to use this thing in tube mode. All right, three, two, one. And your music will still be playing while this happens. And the little IFI logo here flashes white. And then it'll flash red, the music will turn off, and then it'll turn an ambery kind of yellow color. And then the tubes will be functioning. All right, there's the red, so your music will be shut off at this point. And there's the click, amber, and now we are in tube mode. And then here on the right, we have the gain setting. There's three settings. We're on the middle gain, but if you want to change gain, we'll flip three, two, one. And it'll click, your music will turn off. It clicks again, and now you are in a different gain. So that's how long it takes to change gains and turn on tube mode on the ICANN Pro here. Uh, the input is instant change. There's four of them, which we'll talk about later. Uh, the other neat thing is the Pro ICANN has a motorized volume knob with the remote. So I have a little piece of poster board putty here. And we'll stick that guy right there on the knob so you can see. And you have a little remote here. And you just hold volume up and it spins kind of slowly to turn up the volume and it comes back down. So that's always a nice thing to have. So I'll take that off. And then for the, the IESL, this thing's all, all instant. You turn it on, just instantly comes on. I can balance speaker and all these switches all change stuff instantaneously. Uh, there's no waiting for any of those things to turn on. So that thing functions completely instantly. And then one more thing to note is neither of these units is a DAC. There is a matching DAC that goes with these, which is the IDSD. The newest version of that actually just came out. Uh, but I do not have that, just the two amps. And we have been feeding it with the RME ADI2 DAC that you can see up here on top of the two IFI units. 
Okay, so at this point, I am going to go on ahead and move all this stuff over to the review table, as well with the, some other amps and some headphones. And we'll do the in-depth overview of the amplifiers there, as well as some comparisons. So see you guys in a bit. All right, and now we are back here on the white review table. So now we are going to do a little overview of specs here, and we're going to start things off with the Pro ICANN. So the important specs to note are total harmonic distortion in solid state mode is 0 0.0015, balanced 0 0.005, single-ended, uh, signal to noise ratio of 100 greater than 147 balanced or greater than 137 dB single-ended, maximum output power at 16 ohms. Out of the balance of this amp is 14 watts a channel. And out of the single-ended, 4.8 watts a channel. Uh, output voltage, 23 volts, balanced, 11.5 volts single-ended. Uh, output impedance, 2 ohms balanced, 1 ohm single-ended. Power consumption, 22 watts idle and 50 watts max. Uh, let's see, and it weighs 4.3 pounds, and that's about all the relevant specs on the ICANN Pro. And then for the ISL, only thing's kind of relevant, maximum output voltage, 640 volts, power consumption of less than a watt, and weighs 5.5 pounds. Okay, so now let's do a overview of the build here on the amps. So starting off with the, the Pro ICANN here, you have a totally aluminum box, uh, completely all around, fully aluminum, and it's pretty heavy. You, uh, the top of it is not flat. It actually has a, like a ripple pattern to it, as you can see with the lighting. It's got some cutouts. It has like a magnifying glass thing there that you can see in and see the tubes and stuff on the top. Over here on the left, this is where the tubes are when they're turned on that I mentioned when we were, when, uh, we were over on the desk. Uh, and then on the bottom, you have a silicone foot. It says IFI and then GE in, there in the thing there because this thing uses uh, GE tubes. And then for the front, give a little overview of the front here. All right, you have power uh, button right there. Input selector, uh, one, two, three, and balanced. One, two, and three are all RCAs. Balanced is a dual three pin. You have X base switch, which is analog base boost. Now there's three settings. There's off, and then there is 10 hertz. It says 10 hertz uh, boosts base below 40 hertz, 20 hertz boosts base below 80 hertz, and 40 hertz boosts base below 160 hertz. And I don't know why they didn't just put those numbers, uh, but that is what they chose to do. So those are the three base settings. It's a fully analog base boost. And actually, I'll put up a, a measurement uh, graph of a headphone with the four positions so you can see uh, the base boost, probably some planar headphone. Uh, now here on the, the right below the base boost knob, you have the, the tube mode. So you have solid state, tube, and tube plus. Now tube and tube plus tube, I guess, is kind of like hybrid tube and tube plus is full tube. That's just what I've been saying. Uh, so that is the tube modes, and I already showed you how long those take to turn on. Uh, so here you have a combo three pin XLR and quarter inch, uh, four pin balanced out, another uh, XLR quarter inch combo, three and a half millimeter single ended, which is with IFI's IE match, which is the special circuit thing that they came up with for IEMs, so it's supposed to reduce noise on very sensitive IEMs. So you're not really going to be plugging full-sized headphones into that because it does gimp the power quite a bit because it's made for IEMs, so don't use that as a 3.5mm input for headphones. Uh, that thing seemed a little less powerful than my, uh, my RME, unless you really cranked up the gain, so it's kind of a weak uh, amp. And then over here you have 3.5mm balanced, which uh, nobody has this besides IFI, and you're gonna have to get a custom cable made to use that, so that's not really gonna be that useful. And then, going back to these two, so it has, you can do dual three pin XLR, so some people get their headphones wired up where uh, each side is its, is its own XLR, uh, each using two of the three pins instead of just using four pin, which I don't really get the big draw to that, but you can do that with this. 
And then the dual quarter inch I thought was going to be where you could just wire each side of your headphone up to a quarter inch plug, but it's not. What you have to do is you have to get a, a cable made with two quarter inch mono jacks where the left one is both negative terminals from each driver and the right one is both positive terminals from each driver. Which is like, what? Why would you why would you do that? Like nobody has a cable like that. That's not a standard cable that anybody uses. Like the dual three pin is weird, but that's really, really weird. Uh, well, dual three pin's not that weird, but it's not extremely common, but nobody has that weird dual quarter inch. Uh, it's, yeah, that's even less common than three and a half millimeter balanced because I've seen a few headphones now that have that as an option with adapters. So now for the 3D settings. So you have the 3D knob here, and this is not 3D like uh, virtual surround or something like that. Uh, what this essentially is is a soundstage boost, and this is also analog because this amp has no DSP at all. And there are a couple settings. You have 30 plus, 30, 60 plus, and 90, 60 plus. And those do different things uh, for headphones and speakers. I actually didn't try that with speakers, but uh, it would also boost the sound stage or the width of the speakers a little bit. Uh, but basically, so what this does is it doesn't change the center image at all. And sometimes it's kind of hard to notice it on certain headphones and certain tracks. But basically what it does is when you have something that's playing more out of the left and the right channel, each time you flip the switch, it just gets like increasingly farther away sounding. Where like if something's playing, like if you have three like center left and right, and the two things both sound in front of you, like each switch makes it sound like a different varying degree. Like the one sounds like it's like 30 degrees shifted, the one 45, and then all the way sounds like it's completely to your left and your right. And it's kind of interesting and kind of fun to, to play with. Uh, I typically didn't really use it too, too much, but it was kind of a cool thing to play around with, uh, just like the bass boost was. That was kind of fun to play around with. So that is the, the 3D settings on the iCan Pro. And now you also have the three-way gain switch that I showed you earlier with a 0, 9, and 18 dB settings. I showed you how long that takes to, to turn on. And then we have the volume knob that is motorized, as I already showed you, with the little remote. It's just a little generic plastic remote. And here we have the IR sensor for that remote. And that is your tour of the front, pretty much. Uh, just Once again, that's the power indicator there with the little IFI logo with little holes cut in the metal for that. So that is the front of the iCan Pro. Moving on to the back. Starting off, we have a uh, balanced input, three RCA inputs, uh, balanced pre-outs, which I believe these do mute when you plug in the headphones, uh, RCA pre-out, uh, power in, and then power loop out, and then the IFI, the IESL link, I think is what it's called. Yeah, ESL link, uh, which is their specialized uh, HDMI that loops the power and signal of this box into the IESL energizer here. And when you do that, you don't have to hook up the IESL with power or signal, no wall power and no RCA or XLR in. All you have to do is just use this special HDMI cable. So they give you this real nice uh, silver HDMI cable with the silver wire and silver plugs. And that links the two of these things together. And like I said, no power and no signal needed to the IESL when you use that plug. So that is pretty nifty. Okay, now for the IESL, uh, the build on this thing is the same overall. It's actually even heavier than the, the ICANN is. Uh, but we'll just go over the, the stuff on this. So starting off, this is the power knob. So it has four settings. You have off, ICANN, balanced, and speaker. So off is off. I can uh, switches to taking that HDMI input from the iCan Pro. Now, if you don't have the iCan Pro and you just want the IESL, uh, you have to uh, plug this thing into the wall, and that will not do anything. Uh, balanced uses the four-pin XLR balanced in the back. I'll show you in a second. And speaker switches to the speaker terminals. Now, this switch is the AC termination switch, and you have off uh, normal. Pro and 
pro plus normal. So off turns off the, the, ex, the electrostatic outputs. Uh, normal turns on the normal, the old school six pin uh, stacks uh, plug. Uh, pro turns on the pro one and normal plus pro turns both of them on at the same time. Now here you have your, your bias selector and you have, let's see, 500, 540, 580, 600, 620, or 640 volt bias. So you can pick uh, what uh, bias your electrostatic headphones use because different uh, electrostatic headphones have different biases. In the manual, they actually give a, um, a list of headphones and what bias they use, which is kind of nice. And then here you have your, your impedance selector. And what this does is it picks what uh, ohm load that it shows the, the speaker amplifier, or even the, the ICANN actually also shows that. Um, so to make the amp like not be able to push as much power so to not risk blowing up your headphones. So you have 96, 64, 24, or 16 ohm uh, impedance <laughs> I'll drop that, that you can uh, pick here on the IESL. So that is pretty much your tour of the front. And then you also have the, the four pin XLR because this thing can also can, can run a headphone off of that. Now of note, there is no volume control on the IESL. So if you do not have the ICANN Pro uh, feeding this thing, you have to have some sort of preamp to preamp this thing. When you use the, the IESL link, you use the volume knob on the ICANN. And also of note, when you do use the IESL link, the tube mode, the bass boost, the soundstage boost, and the gain settings all apply to the IESL as well. So it's not just exclusive to the ICANN. If you have both, you get those settings also on the IESL, which is neat and fun to play around with. Now going to the back, uh, you have uh, just standard speaker terminals in and out. I believe this loops them out. I don't have any passive speakers, so I didn't test that. You have uh, your male 4-pin XLR. So you can get a male to female 4-pin XLR cable and technically feed this thing with a headphone amp, which would be kind of weird, but I guess you could do that. I didn't try it because I don't have one of those cables. What I did have was a, um, a female 4-pin that plugged into there, two banana plugs that I plugged into my shit Vidar and fed it that way, which, was, which worked uh, quite well. And I also tried the speaker terminals that works also. Uh, you have your power input, which you must use if you don't have the, the ICANN Pro, because otherwise this thing doesn't get any power. And your ESL link, once again, to use the HDMI on the back, or the HDMI from the ICANN Pro. So that is the general overview of the two units. So now we're just going to talk about some usage and some quirks and the I guess quirks and features, we're going to go full Doug DeMuro here. So neither of these units has a DAC, so you have to feed it with some sort of DAC. There is the matching IDSD that goes with these if you want a DAC that also is IFI. Or you can feed it with your own DAC. I was using the RME. I also have one of IFI's uh, little Nano here, which technically you could feed it with uh, with this thing. It's kind of a cheap DAC in comparison to $1,800, $1,500. So the, the first thing I want to note is the ICAM Pro gets very, very hot um, over a long period of use. This thing doesn't get that hot. It gets a little bit warm when you start pushing uh, headphones. But this thing uh, gets really, really hot, even in solid state mode, solid state or tube. Once it's on after about, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, this thing is kind of un uncomfortable to touch. So just something I wanted to, to note. Now, the, the IESL here is the electrostatic one, and this is what I reviewed the, the L700 off of on the, the IESL here. And I want to talk about the experience of feeding it with the, the ICANN Pro. On the stacks, I didn't have any problem uh, feeding it with the ICANN. I think that this gimps it a little bit um, because you have to run it on the highest gain setting. And even still, you're taking the volume on the ICANN pretty far up. So I think this thing is current limiting it a little bit. And I did notice that when you feed this with a speaker amp, you do get a little more impact, and a little more, a little bit better dynamics um, than you do feeding it with the ICANN. 
It's not bad, but I would try to feed this with a speaker amp if you can. Now, let me grab a headphone here. So the L700 is gone now, and we have another electrostatic headphone here that will also be reviewed off the IESL, and that is the, the Hi-Fi Min Jade 2, which I know this thing is a little bit of a controversial headphone at the moment. But this thing will also be reviewed off of the, the IESL. Now, I did notice that when feeding the, the IESL with the ICANN, and running these, I tried it at 580 and 600 volts because the original Jade was at 600 volt bias. I tried them on the 580 uh, stacks bias. That certain tracks was, it, uh, the ISL clipped when fed by the ICANN Pro and did not clip when fed by the shit Vidar so with the speaker amp input. Now, I don't know if that's exclusive to my units or somebody said it was because of my DAC, but just something I wanted to note, didn't clip with the speaker amp, but did clip with the, the IESL, but that was only on the Jades, not on the L700. So then as for the, the ICANN Pro here, uh, this thing is dumb powerful. Just that 14 watts is 16 ohms, which means, I mean, they don't give it a, a, a other impedances but regardless this thing with that 18 db of gain and uh, insane power out of the xlr uh, makes this thing pretty much able to drive anything like i mentioned in the he6 review uh, this is what i drove the he6 off of which made me want to buy it i do like it better on a speaker amp but this thing drives the he6 well enough which is something that can't be said about the other two amps. I actually did finally try it on the, the THX, and uh, no. So this thing can drive anything, just pretty much anything, anything that is uh, capable of running off of a four-pin XLR. The quarter-inch out is still very powerful, but not quite as definitely not quite or not, not as powerful as the XLR output. And like I already mentioned, IEM out is the same one is only for IEMs. So this thing will be able to drive pretty much just any headphone at all. So I have a few things here that are coming up for review. So uh, the next headphone that will be up for review is the, the ZMF Otor Teakwood. So these are quite, quite good. And it's even capable of driving some other very, very hard to drive stuff like uh, the LCD 4s here. And we also have something uh, a little easier to drive coming up, uh, the, the Mr. Speaker's Ether 2. So, yeah, this thing will drive any headphones. The output impedance is low enough and a ton, a ton of power. This thing will drive most e-stats, but definitely better uh, with the speaker amp than feeding it directly with the iCAN Pro. Okay, so now let's talk about how the, the ICANN Pro sounds compared to other amps. Now, I don't have really much experience at all with electrostatic energizers, so I really don't know how this thing sounds in comparison to other energizers. So this review is just going to be more about the comparison bet between the, the ICANN and other amps, and I, you'll have to try this thing for yourself. This is just going to be more of an overview of the IESL. So... The, the amps that I decided to compare the ICANN Pro to were the Audio Guide and FB1. And I finally got another one of these in. The famed, famed THX AAA 789. And it was quite a little bit interesting of a comparison. So uh, for a solid state comparison, that's what we did. The NFB and the 789. And I used HD800 because very, very source picky headphone. So it picks up well on source changes. So between the NFB and the ICANN, I like the ICANN slightly more. They don't sound that different. I think this is a little bit cleaner. And I think it's just a little bit more, a little bit better microdynamics than on the NFB. But this thing's more powerful, more gain. And like I said, on the HE6, I like the HE6 on this thing, but not on the, the NFB. So I like this amp overall more than the NFB1. Now, here's the thing. 
the 789 is a great amp. It's now it's not the the be all end all of amplifiers that uh, a lot of people are saying it is. It is a great amp. It's a great value, and I think for most people this is going to be an end game amp. But it is not the a true true end game amp. There are definitely better amps you can get for uh, eight hundred to a grand, or even and if you have even more money, you definitely can get better amps than the seven eighty nine. But it is this is a great amplifier, and I A B'd the HD eight hundred on the seven eighty nine and the the ICANN Pro, and I like the seven eighty nine better. the The ICANN Pro in its solid state mode sounds hazier and not as clean as the seven eighty nine does. I was listening to, to to string tracks and orchestras, and on the seven eighty nine the strings sound very crisp, very clear, very defined. And the ICANN Pro has this haziness in the treble. And it just doesn't sound as clear, not as detailed, and not as refined as it does on the 789. And then as for bass, the, the ICANN sounds warmer than the 789 does. Now the 789 is actually a little bit warm. It has a little bit of a sub-bass boost. It's not perfectly neutral like a lot of people uh, say it is. It has a little bit of a sub-bass boost. But this thing is, is warmer, but it's not as controlled. The bass sounds more, but it's not as focused and not as tight as it is on the 789. So overall, this amp sounds a little more smeared and not quite as good with microdynamics. A macro between the two was more or less the same. I think this was maybe just slightly more macro, but this had better microdynamics than on the ICANN Pro here, which sounded kind of smeared and kind of hazy. Now, it's not a too bad of an amp. Uh, when I posted pictures that I got these, a lot of people told me that this thing was junk and was like worse than a Magni 3. And I don't think it's that bad. It's not a horrible amplifier by any means. But it is not an $1,800 sound uh, coming out of this amplifier through its solid state. And as for tubes, I uh, compared it to the only other tube amp I have lying around, which is the the Shit Valhalla 2 here. And honestly, between those two, that's more or less of a toss-up. Uh, they sound a little different. Uh, I think that the the Shit sounds a little tubier. This sounds a little brighter than the Valhalla 2 does. And the bass is a little different. It's a little bit different of a bloom between uh, the two of these things. But for me, it's more or less a toss-up. I didn't really prefer one either way. I think they both sound uh, pretty decent in their tube modes. But yeah, so that was not really that much of a massive difference uh, like we heard between the, the ICANN Pro and the THX. So the ICANN Pro is like a Swiss Army knife. I know that uh, Zeos has used this analogy before. I'm not, I, mean, I guess I'll give him credit for it, but I don't, I'm sure he hasn't made this, this saying up. But this amp, you're, you're paying for the power, because it has insane power, and the features. You're not buying this amp for its straight up sound quality. For $1,800 or even less money, there are better sounding amplifiers out there than the iCam Pro. But what you are buying this thing for is all the features and the fun of it and for it being an all-in-one solution. I mean technically this is the only amplifier you need for for headphones. All the power you could ever want, all the connections you could ever want besides 4.4 or 2.5 millimeter. Uh, you could have the bass boost to play around with, you have the fun soundstage boost to play around with, tube modes, three different tube modes, and you can just pick uh, endless combinations of stuff different gains, combinations of tube and bass, no tube bass, soundstage bass, like it's just fun to play around with the different settings on this amplifier. And if you have both that and the IESL, you can, you know, apply those also to the IESL, which is also quite fun. So this thing is going to depend on who you are if you want uh, this kind of amp. If you want raw sound quality I don't, this is not your amp for $1,800. If you want a all-in-one solution that'll work for any headphone and is a tube amplifier, a solid state amplifier, preamp, and 
has all those fun other settings in one box, this is the amp for you. That is who is going to be buying the, the ICANN Pro here. Now, the IESL, I think, is a more compelling product um, if it holds up to other electrostatic converters, because I haven't heard of other electrostatic converters. Uh, but assuming it does, this thing for, it says 1500 bucks used they're like maybe 900 I've seen reviews from like 900 to a grand um, this thing's kind of neat um, if you like electrostatic headphones because you can feed it with a speaker amp which it should change depending on your speaker amp and then you can pick your bias voltage for different uh, different brands if you have something that's not stacks like a, like a Sennheiser Orpheus or a Hyphen stat or King Sound or the Cossy stats so this thing I think is overall probably a more compelling product to a lot of people uh, just to have something uh, neat to run electrostatic headphones off of. But in conclusion, the IFI Pro Amps are very neat. Uh, they have very cool features, great build. Uh, they look really cool. They're really fun to play with. I love all the settings and knobs. They don't sound horrible by any means, but the sound quality is not quite there for their price point, but like I mentioned, Swiss Army Knife, they do a lot of things okay instead of any one thing particularly well. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the IFI Pro Amps here. Once again, big shout out to IFI for loaning me these things. I definitely enjoyed my time with them and playing with both of them. I uh, look forward to some other reviews of the, the headphones that I showed off because we will have reviews of all of those coming as well as some other amps and such coming up. And also one more headphone I have. Uh, normally I monitor in uh, Sennheiser HD25s, but uh, we have the, the Neumann NDH20s here uh, for uh, review. So look forward to the review of those coming also. Uh, but anyway, uh, links of where to buy both of these amps in the description below. Uh, and as well, as well as my Twitter, my contact email, and all that stuff. And I'll also probably put a ears graph down there of a headphone uh, using all three base settings on the ICANN Pro. But anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next review. Bye.